Hello students, this is Dr. Ben. I'd like to take a couple minutes to work on a problem out of Chapter 8 that has to do with the concept of torque. So here we have a problem that concerns the minute hand of the clock called Big Ben over in London that we've all heard about since we were kids. So we're given some information about the minute hand Oh, I'm sorry, the hour hand of this clock. Um, it's 2.7 meters long. It's a uniform rod attached to one end. And in this problem, we're asked to find the torque on this hour hand um, at two different positions um, on, on the clock. So the first part for A, we would like to solve this problem when the, when the hour hand is located at noon. So if we draw a sketch of the situation, if we pretend that this rectangle is the hour hand, and there is its axis of rotation, so I've got it pointing upwards towards 12 noon, and this other dot would represent its center of mass, where we can pretend that all of the mass of the object is concentrated, and the weight of the hour hand would point down, and if the length of the hour hand is equal to L, then the distance from the center of mass to the pivot point is equal to L over 2. Alright, so we can see that in, in this particular problem that the angle between the, um, the radius R and the force, which is the weight, is equal to 180 degrees. So if I would actually draw that vector r on top, it would point from our axis to the place where the force is applied to the rod, and so that's at its center of mass. So that direction is up and the weight is down. And so if we compute the torque, which is equal to the force times the distance times the sine of the angle, we're going to get zero newton meters in this first case because the force is acting along the line of action. So it's directly parallel to the line that points from the axis of rotation to the application of the force, and so that force does not cause any torque. All right, if we move on to part B of the problem, then we want to orient the hour hand so it's located at 9 o'clock. So we'll orient it horizontally. And I'll put the axis of rotation at the left-hand end and the center of mass at the middle. So the distance from the point of, um, of the axis to the center of mass would be equal to L over 2. And again, the same weight force is going to act on the hour hand. And now, if I draw the vector r that goes from the axis to the point of application of the force, we see that that angle is now 90 degrees. So in this particular geometry, the weight is perpendicular to the rod. And so when we calculate the torque, we would take the force times the distance times the sine of the angle, we would get the force, which is equal to the weight of the rod, multiplied by the distance, which would be L over 2 times the sine of 90 degrees. So we need to go back and find our number. So we have 60 kilograms and 2.7 meters. So we have 60 times 9.8 times 2.7 divided by 2 times the sine of 90, which is 1. So when we work that out on our calculator, 60 times 9.8 times 2.7 divided by 2 equals 794. and the units of that torque would be newtons times meters. So when the hour hand is pointing straight upwards, there is no torque because the force is parallel to the line of action, but when 
the hour hand is horizontal, then the torque is actually the maximum because the angle is 90 degrees between that line of action and the force.